There are an estimated 700 million cats on the planet, of all shapes, sizes, and temperaments. Your typical house cat is the most numerous of these kitties and the most recent addition to the family Felidae, only deciding to become our pets about 10,000 years ago after 11 million years of stalking the Earth. But despite the ubiquity of these little floofs and chunky boys, much about cats remains mysterious. Why exactly do they purr? Why and how do they always sit just out of arm's reach and still want pets from me? Why do they suddenly decide to fight demons in the middle of the night? Answering these questions is difficult because, simply put, cats aren't the easiest test subjects. I'm surrounding myself with these sweet kitties today because of one of these mysteries. Did you know that until very recently, the exact form and function of a cat's tongue was unknown? Well, that stops today because we are going to sink and sharpen our claws on some science that you may have not thought of before. What cat tongues actually do. Are you going to help today, lady? Yes. Now entering the facility. The average house cat spends up to a quarter of their waking life grooming themselves. And considering that your cat spends most of the day asleep, what they are doing while grooming must be critically important. These tongues must be more than just fleshy bits of sandpaper, right? If they were, they wouldn't clean the cat as well as it does. Cats are just about the cleanest animal I can think of. Have you ever tried smelling a cat? I have. You know what cats smell like? Nothing. It's okay, it's not a, you, you can do that. Cats smell like nothing. You ever smelled a dog? Your dog stinks. Your dog smells. And the reason is tongue physiology. Today's video has been sponsored by Keeps. Guys, are you worried about losing your hair? <laughs> Want to treat your male pattern baldness online and at home with consultations with real doctors that have degrees? <laughs> then you've got to try Keeps. Hey there, gamers. I'm award-winning science educator and the world's first certified hairologist, Kyle Hill. You know what I'm not doing when I'm sciencing? I'm thinking about the best way to preserve my luscious locks. Guys, did you know that up to 66.6% .6 repeating of you before the age of 35 will experience some form of male pattern baldness? No! Try Keeps. Keeps is a subscription service that focuses on making it easier and more affordable than ever for men to treat their male pattern baldness online. Get FDA-approved medications delivered right to your door. Get consultations online with real doctors 24-7. Get the hair-keeping service that has more five stars than any other stars-having-hair-keeping competitor. <laughs> Keeps. What if I'm on top of a mountain? Keeps. What if I'm underwater? <laughs> what if I'm flying like an aeroplane? <laughs> you guessed it, keeps. My dudes, if you're ready to take hair loss seriously, if you are ready to find out what hundreds of thousands of men already know, go to keeps.com slash Kyle Hill for 50% off your first order of nigh life changing keeps. That's keeps.com slash Kyle Hill. Oh, what can I say other than A big wow moment for any cat owner has to be when they actually look closely at their cat's tongue for the first time and notice that this delicate tissue is in fact covered with hundreds of little spiny structures called papillae. Keep observing and you'll also notice that when a cat is grooming, only the largest area of papillae are in contact with the fur, not the whole tongue. And so these tiny structures must be important. A few years ago, Dr. Alexis Noel had one of these wow moments. She was watching her parents' cat try to lick a microfiber cleaning cloth. The cat's tongue was getting stuck. Hmm, well this didn't fit with a study from the 1980s that said a cat tongue papillae were little cones and bumps like sandpaper. If a cat's tongue really was like sandpaper, she thought, as many of you might think, it shouldn't be getting so stuck. But if a cat's tongue was less like sandpaper and more like Velcro, it would get stuck. This simple observation inspired Dr. Noel in that classic scientist way to officially study the biomechanics of cat tongues. And what resulted was this paper. Yes, yes lady, that exact paper. You doing science down there? 
When Dr. Noel looked at some cat tongues in her lab, she didn't see the same shapes that had gone uncontested in the scientific literature for almost 40 years. Instead, she saw these microscopic spine-like scoops, like curved semi-hollow sections of cylinders made out of the same stiff stuff that human fingernails are. And it's these backwards-facing forms that are the biggest clue as to the true function of the cat tongue. I want to show you a quick little experiment here that my cats here definitely won't screw up as I'm doing it. Observe, in my hand I have a cone shape. This cone is covered with a top. Underneath it, I've carved out more of a scoop shape, similar to the hollow scoop shapes of cat papillae. Now, watch what happens to this shape when I dunk it in water. I dunk the normal cone in water, and as you can see, under some motion, the water tends to drip right off, as you'd expect. But if I remove the top, make it now semi-hollow, scoop shape, and I dip the papillae analog in there, now, under some motion, the water doesn't move. It's stuck up in this shape, and the reason is surface tension. Surface tension is the force that acts against gravity due to adhesive and cohesive forces of water molecules that keeps water in the place that it is. It's the reason why tattoos work and Dr. Noel discovered it's also the reason why what appeared to be a simple biological implement, the cat's tongue, was actually extremely complicated, much more complicated than anyone had thought previously. A cat's tongue is covered in hundreds of these little shapes that every time they go back inside a cat's mouth, they are filled with a tiny amount of saliva that stays there. Hmm, but this is only one piece of the puzzle. Like cats themselves, a cat's fur coat is complicated. A cat's fur coat consists of an overcoat or protective guard layer here that has thicker hairs that protects the floofier undercoat where hairs are 25 times more numerous. But as you can see, despite this extreme fluffiness, a cat's hair, like an atom, is mostly empty space. You can compress the hair down so much that it becomes a fraction of what it was. And studies have shown that no matter the cat, their fur can compress to up to 99%. Get back here, I was talking about 99% of its original height. And what's really interesting is that it seems that no matter the cat, whether it's 10 pounds or a thousand pounds, the hair all compresses to just about the same height. The similar smooshability of cat hair is probably why nature crafted cat tongues to have spines of a constant height. As Dr. Noel discovered, cheetahs, tigers, cougars, house cats, snow leopards, bobcats, they all have papillae within a fifth of a millimeter of each other. And that's surprising. You'd think that a thousand pound tiger would have bigger tongue stuff than your kitty cat at home, but no. It seems that evolution has found a solution that is good enough for the whole Philidae family. Imagine if this relationship were different. Now, I'm gonna draw a graph. The y-axis is gonna be the height of various cats' fur, and the x-axis is gonna be the height of cat tongue spines, which we just said are all a single value. What Dr. Noel figured out is that these fluid-filled papillae would only be the most efficient if they could reach all the way down through compressed fur to a cat's skin. That is to say, the papillae need to be at least as long as compressed fur is tall. This line represents that value. Guess what she found? Every single cat species except for one fell below this line into the groomable area. In other words, there is a perfect relationship between cat hair and cat tongues that evolved for optimal grooming. Again, this wouldn't be the case if cat tongues were sandpapery. And by the way, the breed at the top, the outlier there, is the Persian breed, but their groomability is our fault through artificial selection and not nature's. So, a cat's tongue isn't just a simple sandpapery appendage. If it were, it wouldn't be able to go all the way down through the undercoat to the base of the skin and deliver saliva to the cat's skin where enzymes in that saliva can act to break apart blood and dirt and other contaminants and the tongue redistributes 
oils and it removes mats. And as Dr. Noel calculated, the saliva at the skin level can account for up to 25% of a cat's thermal regulation needs. And with the cat tongue, evolution didn't stop there. Unlike a human hairbrush that has bristles embedded in a stiff matrix, the papillae on a cat's tongue can rotate and therefore increase the resistive force of torque on any tangles as the tongue moves through hair. When those tangles are gone, the structures return to their original positions and the forces get smaller, which makes a cat tongue more than twice as gentle during steady grooming than a human brush, as Dr. Noel discovered after creating a cat tongue analog and testing it. The flexible papillae on this cat-inspired brush was also much easier to clean and make hairballs from. Cat tongues are not just sandpaper bleps that they occasionally lick your skin with and then it starts to hurt because of the papillae, but you don't want to stop them because it seems like an act of love and you think about licking them back, but then no, that's weird. And then you want... Cat tongues are not like that, no. Instead, they are force-adjusting, fluid-filled, one-size-fits-all cat's multi-use appendages. They are an incredible example of evolution that I think has gone overlooked by too many cat owners for too long. It's really incredible that even after being our companions for over 10,000 years, we are still learning things about them. Until next time. Oh, and uh, never declaw your cats and adopt when possible, and uh, the breeding of French Bulldogs is unethical. Okay, bye-bye. Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of today's video. If you want to join the facility, if you want to drape on a silky white lab coat, if you want to join our official members only Discord, if you want discounts on merch, see episodes early, have private members only live streams with me, <laughs> not like that. You can go to patreon.com slash kylehill and join the facility today. I said you can drape on a lab coat, we're working on those. And if you support us just enough, you get your name on Aria here each and every week. And as you can see, there's literally hundreds and hundreds. Uh, how would I ever pass the time? When I say uh, that bulldogs are unethical, it's in the same vein that uh, Persians have been bred to be basically ungroomable through natural means, through artificial selection from, from us breeding these animals. The cats can no longer sufficiently groom themselves with one of the most sophisticated grooming implements nature has ever come up with. It's, it's doing harm to these animals and, and vets tell you that you have to wash these cats like three times a week. And have you ever tried washing a cat? It's basically a death sentence. In the same way, we've bred bulldogs to have heads so big that they can't, that like 95% of them have to be born by cesarean section. If humans went away, they would too. Is that an ethical thing? I don't know. I... Something to think about. Thanks for watching. And thanks to my cats, who are adorable, scientifically.